Curiosity Corner. Oh, welcome. Quite a groundbreaking idea, I suppose. Oh, tea cakes, lad. I'm touched. Uh, speaking of touch, let's give a warm hand to this week's inventor of the week. Ouch! Now, as you know, Wallace, inventors are by nature pretty determined people. But Mark Lessig is more determined than most. Seven years ago, he had a car accident in his native Tasmania. He was so badly injured, he had to have his right arm amputated. I don't remember really what happened, except waking up in hospital, obviously in pain, distressed, and with my arm missing. Modern prosthetic arms typically use sensitive electronics to turn nerve impulses in the amputee's remaining limb into movements in the new arm. And you might have thought they'd be ideal for Mark. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Because his amputation was so close to his shoulder, most of these sophisticated prosthetics wouldn't fit him. Even when he found one that did, the arm wasn't strong enough to cope with his job as an engineer. The electric limb broke down all the time. Maybe because of my occupation, it, it uh, simply was too fragile. It became apparent to me that I had to get the very robust limb, and no one even had one. Some people would have given up and settled for a simple cosmetic arm. But not Mark. If there was no suitable prosthetic available, then he'd invent his own. So I used to muck about with Meccano sets and pulling apart clocks and umbrellas and all sorts of things as a child. I'm just a fiddler. I can't help myself. Researching prosthetics on the internet, one particular design caught his eye. The Carnes arm from 1902. Like this one, the Carnes arm used straps attached to the wearer's shoulder to transfer muscle movements via a system of gears, springs and cogs to flex the arm, rotate the wrist and grip items with the hand. It was way ahead of its time. You know, I managed to buy a Cairns artificial arm and having the blueprints work to a freely available on the internet enabled me to improve on it. He started out building a new robust arm from lightweight steel and plastic, sharing his developments with other prosthetic users via the internet. This is a new articulated finger that we built in our shop. Got a fair bit of range and motion, more than the original cans. But Mark's arm still shared some of the flaws of early prosthetics, which were so heavy you needed to be Superman to use them for more than about five minutes. So he's now moving to a super lightweight carbon fibre design. And there's always a moment of excitement when he gets his new arm back from the specialist craftsman with its latest modifications. This is the first time I've had it with the hand on. This is the mechanism for the elbow. The fingers will move with a cord, they'll move in like that. The cord's not connected up at the moment. Here we go. The vision is to make a robust prosthetic limb, sort of thing you can work in the garden or work in the workshop. To do what I'm doing is the coolest thing in the world. Mark's now working with scientists at the University of Tasmania to improve his prosthetic further. The current arm is uh, just a magical piece of technology. That's why it's pretty. Mark's brought that back to life and the fantastic key elements of it are going to come back into use. While his new prosthetic is still being refined, it's attracting interest from potential investors like the US military. If they can bring some financial muscle to bear, then Mark's arm may soon be helping people like him all over the world. Bum, 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 bum. Now that's what I call docket devotion. <clears throat> anyway. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Uh, 
care for a slice, Gromit? Oh, well, no accounting for taste. Well, viewers, from me, from Gromit, from Arj. Au revoir, Chucks. <laughs> <laughs>